Well, the ficus whitefly is a new pest in Florida. It's a new uh, pest actually to North America. It came in here uh, in August of uh, 2007 in Miami-Dade County, and we believe that it came from South Asia. That's where it's known to have been a pest of ficus, uh, you know, in, in that South Asia part of the world. So we've been dealing with it here uh, a little bit over a year now in Broward County. Uh, first find in Broward County was in December of 2007, and it has since spread throughout the county. What you basically will see early on is uh, little white flies. They're about the size of a gnat, and they're definitely a white color, very small, buzzing around the foliage, in and out of the foliage, particularly early on the, in the morning, although you can find them at, at all times of the day. Uh, and generally the hedge will look pretty good. Uh, a few weeks later, after the eggs have laid and the little nymphs have begun to hatch, you'll begin to start seeing sort of a yellowing of the foliage, sort of a chlorosis, if you will. Um, some parts of the hedge will be affected more than others, particularly at the bottom and moving up. Uh, oftentimes it stays green on top for quite some time. Once the leaves yellow, it's usually only a couple of weeks before you get into the defoliation phase. And that's when the leaves begin to drop off of the hedge uh, in pretty significant numbers. And if that process is allowed to continue, eventually you'll end up with something that looks like this. It's pretty much completely defoliated. For the adult white fly is active, doing a little bit of feeding, mating, laying eggs, and so forth. Then those eggs laid primarily on the undersides of the foliage. They're very, very difficult to see with the naked eye. You really need a hand lens to do that. But they're kind of a bronze color, usually laid in clusters, and there can be up to several hundred per leaf. Um, those eggs then hatch into an immature form of the insect, which is uh, it's a nymph. It's, it's actually a, like a miniature white fly. And they're actually encased in a skin, if you will, uh, almost a little dome or disc shape type structure that is kind of where they get reared. And while they're in that, uh, that structure, they're feeding very heavily on the, the, the sap of the leaves. And we don't know why we get such a dramatic toxic effect from this insect, but one theory is that as they're feeding, it, they may also be injecting a toxin into the, into the plant. And of course, ficus have that milky juice uh, in them that is actually connected uh, by a series of uh, structures throughout the whole plant and it's conceivable that if in fact uh, there is a toxin being injected that it could be migrating throughout the plant which would explain kind of the incredible uh, stress response that you see on the ficus plant. Uh, hedges as well as trees. Um, so those little immatures hang around in there for a, a short time, do their feeding, and then they will begin as they mature into an adult white fly, uh, develop a pair of uh, sort of sinister looking red eyes. Very, very unusual. And that's important because if you've treated and you come back and you find these little skins or these little cases still on the foliage, it may be nothing more than the remnant of the insect that was there and has then emerged as an adult. Or it could even be a case where it's died as a nymph because of the pesticide application. So what's important when you're looking to see if your treatment is still effective is can you find live nymphs with those red eyes? And, and if they're dead, they will, the whole uh, structure will darken and they'll be, they'll be obviously not alive. So then to complete the life cycle though, that nymph, once it matures, it vacates that skin or that little disc-shaped structure and it, it goes on to mate as an adult and then the cycle continues. As bad as some of these hedges look, when you scratch the surface, you may find, in this case, the wood is dead. I mean, the, the stem is dead. There's nothing green, nothing live about it. It's totally desiccated. However, if you, you come down a little bit farther on that same branch and you scratch it, it's green and it's alive. There's live tissue there. And you can see, in fact, the, uh, 
branch here is beginning to leaf out with replacement foliage. So that's a good sign. You know, it's dead up here, up top, where it's all withered, dry, and it crumbles. It doesn't scratch green. But down below a certain point, in this case only about six inches, you actually are encountering live tissue again, which is where your regrowth is going to come about. Uh, so I guess the bottom line is, is you know, you can sustain a lot of damage and of course have a very non-functional hedge in terms of the screening effect for a while, but it is possible that some of these hedges will come back, especially if they're given good maintenance and that would be, uh, you know, put them on a, a, a watering program during the dry season, you know, not daily certainly, but maybe twice a week as the water restrictions would allow. Uh, possibly fertilize the hedge with uh, a good landscape fertilizer like 8 to 12 um, in the hopes that you can kind of bring it back and and of course if the white fly returns and reinfests you've got to be ready to treat it again so those are some things that you might want to keep in mind question about you know maintaining ficus aside from the uh, the drenching that we talked about, uh, supplemental fertilization and irrigation to try to get the ficus hedge back on its feet, um, pruning comes into mind because ficus are routinely pruned anywhere between six to twelve times a year depending on the maintenance level of the property. So you know it's a fairly uh, maintenance intensive uh, uh, part of the landscape. My thing, my take on that would be you know when you've got very limited amount of foliage even in the early stages of, of regrowth and coming back as we see a little bit here in this hedge, beginning to relief down here in these lower areas in particular. Uh, I want to keep every leaf I've got on the hedge while I've got it. And you know, these are the food factories. This is the only hope for the hedge getting back on its feet. So I would be a little hesitant to do any kind of drastic pruning on a hedge like this at this point. Um, obviously it's unsightly and, and I know we all have a need to kind of want to get rid of the dead and start over and I totally get that but my thinking would be you know in this particular case I, I think it's too early I would just kind of let nature take its course um, you know we don't know how long it will take for this foliage to come back and you know you may be very disappointed in the results um, and it may vary depending upon the situation if it's a sort of a security perimeter hedge or you know, it's a pool cabana area where you know, you've obviously got to have 100% screening, uh, you may not be happy with the results. And so my point would be, rather than spend the money to prune it, you know, take a wait and see attitude, give it what you think it needs, some of the things I've just described, see if it comes back, and if it doesn't, you, know, you may end up replacing it. So uh, one, I wouldn't put any more labor into it than necessary, and two, I try to do whatever you can to conserve every leaf on that hedge. And that means basically lay off the pruning for a while. As far as we know, this species is specific to ficus. Now, ficus is a genus that includes many, many different species. Uh, this is ficus benjamina, which is the common ficus hedge. We also have uh, ficus retusa or ficus nidida, which is the Cuban laurel fig, which is more typically in Broward a canopy tree. There are also ficus benjamina trees. They don't exist just as hedges, but some of them are canopy trees. Um, ficus aurea, which is our native strangler fig, is also susceptible. The uh, banyan tree, uh, ficus bengalensis, is susceptible. Uh, and there are others. So, you know, pretty much any ficus plant in the landscape uh, we would consider at risk. Now, having said that, it appears that this particular species, Ficus benjamina, may be the most susceptible. Um, we're not sure why, and it could be just that there's so much of it we just see it a lot more out in the landscape. But, um, you know, I would be concerned if I had ficus trees or ficus hedges of any species on my property. I would want to be monitoring them regularly and, and treating them as needed.